today we're gonna be reacting to Young Don Dar Sauce God. If you don't know who Sauce God is, you've been under a rock. I appreciate the subscriptions. You subscribe, I like you. You're a good person. Come on out again. We, we can't mess with them. You haven't subscribed yet. You might as well just go back on the video. You haven't subscribed, so I have nothing to say. But make sure you subscribe, hit that like button. It really do help your boy. My mom said I'm gonna get kicked out if I don't want to reach a thousand subs and a hundred likes. If I don't reach that, I'm out there. The one in the streets. So now I'm just feeling pure anger because I'm like, yo, you had me waiting there. I, I was worried about you. Why didn't she drink me a water? Phone? She's like, I ain't have service. I'm like, so you couldn't, you didn't see? Where did you think I was? I, I don't know anyone here. I have nothing here. Losing my temper with my sister. Youngest. As a guy, you were one of either two kinds of boys growing up. Either you were the kind of boy that punched holes in walls, or you were like, I don't know, a dude that grew up to be like a functioning member of society or some <laughs> bullshit. I don't know. Listen, if you watch my channel for any period of time, you would know that I definitely do not fall into the second category. Now, I definitely had anger issues as a kid. So I, I know I acted out in several ways, but I can remember this animation three holes really good, bro. Specifically doing his thing. that I punched, you know, the other kind of hole, who knows how big. Ah, <laughs> oh, the first <laughs> hole, the first. So I have a little sister. She's two and a half years younger than me, and she's a very sweet girl, but trash at video games, bro. I mean, she's good at yeah, like girly games, you know, like The Sims, Fortnite. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding about. I'm kidding about what? the Fortnite thing. This one time, my dad bought me Super Mario Bros. Right, and off. there are only two things you need to know about this game. One, it's Mario, so like that. And then two, it had a two-player mode where you could tackle the story mode with two different people playing at the same time. And it had a feature play where if one games? character dies, the other one can bring him back to life by popping their bubble. Minute. When you die, you get put in a bubble. And then if Split both screen. Die, then you're oh, yeah, so it, me being the loving big brother that I am, and also having a crippling inability to handle losing, I invited my sister to play the game with me to help me get through the story. So we're playing the game, right? And we're, we're playing a very hard level. I can remember that. And we must have lost several times because my, my blood is starting to boil, right? So we're running through the level and then I die, right? So I'm in the bubble. And my sister had like the big Luigi, you know? Like she had eaten a mushroom, so she's running around. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, yo, no pressure, no rush. But when you get a chance, yo, let a nigga out of this bubble, right? I knew she wasn't gonna last long. And of course she gets hurt, right? So now she's the little Luigi, right? So now I'm like, yo, all right, get me out of this bubble. We bout to lose, yo. And my poor baby sister she was like 10 or 11 at the time right with the weight of the world on her shoulders i played like the sharing gun happens. she dies bro she dies she gets in the bubble and then she doesn't even look at me because she knows she can't she can't she shouldn't she would be bad i was like angry bro and my sister is not like having everybody doing time. that bro. you know like she's nah, doing this do just to spend time with me like she didn't even like mario nigga but she took it she took it so seriously because it was it, it it was important to me that we beat this fucking game. I get up and I, I'm shaking. He about to turn and super sick. The fucking door. Now <laughs> the door was made of wood and it was also hollow. So like my hand just went straight through that shit, you know. So I punched through the door. Instant regret because my mother is still Jamaican, nigga. Like she's definitely gonna come home and murder me. Oh. And break my weed. So I'm like, fuck, right? My sister looks at me and is like, nigga, you go die. <laughs> so now I'm just nigga, sitting you there, go die. still mad that we lost, by the way, but also scared because death is approaching. And then what I think I did is I found like a picture or a poster and then I just like taped it up on my door. You feel me? Because I didn't punch all the way through the door. Mm -hmm. And I think that worked for like a while. I don't remember getting in trouble that day. My sister has a YouTube channel, by the way, where oh, she tells 
this story that's what inspired this video so i'm gonna put the link in the description you can check it out if you want uh the second hole was also because of my sister this was a lot later though i was like 22 uh youtube had just taken off so i was moving out of my friend's house in san diego and i was gonna get my own place in austin texas and in that in-between period, I stayed in New York with my dad, which is where my sister lived. So I'm in New York, crashing it on the couch, you know, because it was super last minute. And right before I'd left San Diego, I had gotten in the relationship with that girl, you know, the girl from the friend I betrayed story. Yeah, that girl, it was super rushed. Got in a relationship I I remember that. after like a month of dating, bro. I get to New York, you know, I, and I know now that I had some distance from her, you know, because when you're in it, when you're in people. it, you know, it's all mm, like, it. you know, sunshine and roses and flowers and fucking, you know, good feelings. But once I was able to like get away from her physically, I could look at the decision and I was like, this was not the best decision. Wasn't quite ready to break up. I was getting there. We were arguing a lot and I was just, I was just on edge. You feel me? Also sleeping on the couch and then hell all of this <laughs> while trying to find a feet, place man. to live in Austin, Texas, which by the way, was a place I had never been before. So I was stressed, right? So one day, right, my sister was still in the middle of the winter school semester and she needed me to take her down to the college so she could drop something off for her professor. So I dropped her off in front of the art department, but the way how the road was set up, it was like a one way and it was also like a one lane street. So I ended up blocking traffic. So what I would do is just drive around the campus and then pull back up in front of the art department. I did this like five times because every time I came there, she wasn't outside and I kept blocking traffic. So I had to just keep going around, coming back, sitting, <laughs> waiting, going around, coming back, sitting, waiting, and she's not coming out. So I'm like, yo, where is she? So it's been like 15 minutes since I've dropped her off. So I go and find a parking lot. I sit in the parking spot and I'm calling her because I'm starting to get a little worried. You know, she was just supposed to go in, drop some off, come back. So I'm calling, I'm calling, it's going straight to voice. So now I'm in big bro mode, okay? All right, I'm getting nervous. I don't like Beat it, location. it's dark. Winter time, seven o'clock in New York. I need to protect her, right? I need to find her, and then I need to protect her. That's that's just instincts right there. But my sister isn't soft, you feel me? And These she had been living in New York so for a while. So she had gotten that, Man, really that improved. New York grit, you know, that New Yorkers had. So part of me is worried, but then the other part of me is upset. Cause there's a part of me that has this feeling that my sister is fine, and she left. She just left to show <laughs> her way. It didn't make sense. That went hard. So I was still that mostly worried, but part of me was like starting to get suspicious. Yeah, After so like hard. 45 minutes of sitting at this campus, waiting for this girl to come back, I was like, fuck it, I'm going home. I called my dad to see if he's heard from her. <laughs> he's not picking up. So I'm like, I'm gonna go home and figure this out. I get back to my dad's house, and as I go inside, guess who I see just chilling at the dinner table? Damn. Sister. So I'm like, yo, what's good? Where you been? She looks at me and is like, what you mean where I've been? I've been here, obviously. You hear you hear that That's attitude? Tough. This wasn't my cute little baby sister that I played Super Mario Bros with anymore. You feel me? This was now a fully grown young black woman from New York. <laughs> Have you ever met a girl from New York? Bro, they're so mean. I don't know what they're just so mean. I hear this oh. attitude and all the, the worry that I had left over turned into anger so now i'm just feeling pure anger because i'm like yo you had me waiting there I, I was worried about you why didn't you pick up your phone she's like i ain't have service i'm like so you couldn't you didn't see where did you think i was i only, i don't know anyone here i have nothing here i only i left the house because of you i'm not your home i'm not home what you thought was happening <laughs> she's like my boyfriend picked me up i don't see what the problem is so then i was like you know what i'm not doing this I'm not doing this. I go down into the basement, which is where I had my computer set up, and then I was like, I'm gonna just work. I'm gonna just work through it, right? And then I get a text from old girl back in California on some bullshit. I don't remember what she said. Is that so now my blood is at like at 11. And then I oh, hear my he sister upstairs talking shit about me to like her girlfriend. She's like, yeah, and then she came in and was all like mad and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck is his problem. So now I'm shaking, bro. Like I'm I'm like, I'm gonna kill somebody. I'm going to murder my sister tonight. And I was just like so angry. So I just got up 
And then I just punched the fucking... <laughs> I punched the wall. I punched, I punched another hole in the wall. And uh, instant regret. Because my dad's Jamaican. And I was like, oh, he's definitely going to come home and murder me. And back when my YouTube channel just started taking off, mm. I was doing these, like, poster giveaways. And I had some. So I just... <laughs> I did the same thing I did when I was 13, nigga. I took wow. a poster. <laughs> oh, my dad probably doesn't even know this poster is still on that wall. I've been back since then. It's still there. I took a poster and I just put it over the hole. So, dad, if you're watching this right now, just don't take that poster down. You feel me? The last hole was not because of my sister. No, this hole was caused by my ex, who had flown from California to Austin, Texas to visit. But that's a story for another time. Donald, am I talking to myself? I gotta get the stuff off the bigger truck to put it on, on the little truck. truck. To yeah, but I don't see why I'm the one. Oh, right. that's gonna be it for that video. That was pretty lit. His animations got really good. He got really good. I was there when he had like a few hundred thousand subscribers. Young Dunn, the sauce god. Pure inspiration. If you guys like that video, just please leave it with a thumbs up and a subscription. We'll be living out on the streets if you don't. Check back with me on the next video. I gotta escape. Dip off in a race. You come to the crib and get stopped at the gate. I'm getting this cake. I'm not the same nigga from Michigan State. I'm getting this paint. I'm richer and wiser. A lot is at stake. And Google is lying. That's not what I make. Just times about eight.